Hey, welcome back. We're at 3.6a. Check out the name of this lesson. Sinusoidal function transformations. That's ridiculous. I can't believe all those words fit together. Basically what that means, we're going to look at sine curves and we're going to move them around. That's what that means. Uh, the standard equations. We looked at very simple standard equations last time. We just said y equals a cosine theta or a sine theta. But now we're going to change that value that's in front of the theta, that coefficient right there. What happens when we put a number there? We're going to learn that today. And then lastly, what happens when we throw a number at the end, just a plus 2 or minus 1, something to that effect? That changes the graph as well. But we're going to review some of the things we learned last time, like the amplitude. That doesn't change. It's half the difference between the maximum and the minimum values. If you take the middle of the graph and you see how tall the graph is, you got to go from the middle. That's the amplitude. The midline. Well, today's a little different. Last time we said the midline is always y equals 0. And that's because all of our graphs were centered on the x-axis. But today we're going to slide them up and slide them down. And so that changes. The horizontal line, it's halfway between the max and min, and it's determined by finding the average of the max and min. Easy. We had to do that in the, in the practice, right? The concavity of the sinusoid will change when it crosses the midline. And now because the graph isn't centered on the x-axis, you're going to have a new equation. It's y equals d. So this value at the end of your equation is d. So the midline will just be y equals d. Now the period. Last time, we said the period was just 2 pi. But that's because b was equal to 1, right? We didn't have a number in front. So it was, technically, it was 2 pi over b with b equal to 1. We didn't tell you that. We're telling you now, though. If you put a number in front, it's going to change the period. If you remember, the period is the change in theta values required for the function to complete one full cycle. In other words, for sine, how far do you have to go before you complete the cycle? Normally, it's 2 pi, right? You go up, down, up. That normally happens at 2 pi for a regular old sine curve. But now we're going to change the number in front of theta. So by doing that, we're actually going to squish this curve in and stretch it out. And we'll show you how that happens later. But the formula now for the period will be 2 pi over b. And we always need to remember that the frequency is the reciprocal of the period, which means you just flip over the period. So that means it's b over 2 pi. It still tells you the number of cycles the graph completes for every one radian uh, of in angle measure. Woo! That was good review. Let's get on some practice problems. Best way to do these practice problems. We look at number one here. We have f of x equals 3 sine of 2x. And from our last lesson, I know the amplitude here is going to be 3, which means the maximum value will be a 3, and the minimum value will be a negative 3. What else do we know? The period. We have a new formula for the period. It's 2 pi over b. So in this equation here we have 2 is actually our value for b remember 3 is our value for a that's the amplitude but we're going to figure out 2 pi over b now b is equal to 2 so it's 2 pi over 2 that means that our period these will cancel out nicely is equal to just a regular old pi so what does that mean that means that we complete one cycle of the sine curve by pi so we're going to be done by pi down here instead of by 2 pi. We're going to be done with the whole function right here. The frequency, remember, is always the reciprocal of the period. So I just like to take my simplified period here. It's, what is it, pi, right? So the frequency would be 1 over pi. The other way you could do it, you could do it from the beginning and call it, uh, what do we got, 2 over 2 pi. But it'll still reduce to this. And lastly, the midline, midline's this value back here that we don't have yet. They'll be in the next examples, but anything that we put at the end plus d, okay? Whatever that d value is, plus 4, minus 5, that'll be the midline. This one doesn't change, so we're going to keep it at y equal to 0. So I'm actually going to draw that midline on for this first example, and that hasn't changed, right, since our last lesson. We actually didn't have to worry about the midline. It was always the x-axis. We started right here at 0. But now, if you notice, we got a 2 in there, and we still have that 3 for the amplitude. What does that 2 do? Well, it means the whole cycle needs to be complete by pi. What does that mean? That means that this sine curve, let me use a different color here. We'll use green. The sine curve needs to start at 0. It goes up, down, and ends at 0. But that happens by pi, right? which means halfway in between, there's another 0, if you remember how sine goes. Between these two values, there's a maximum. Now, I am going to label here. We got 1, 2, 3. 
And remember, our amplitude is 3, and it's positive. So in between these first two values, we're going to reach a positive value that's the maximum. We go down to 0. We're going to reach a minimum value of negative 3. Let's label these down here. All right. And then we have to complete the cycle again because our graph, I mean, we're not done with our graph, right? We're going to keep going. So it repeats. It's periodic. So it starts at 0. It's going to end at 0. In the middle, there's a 0. In between those, there will be a maximum. In this case, it's a 3. In between these, there will be a minimum. It's a negative 3. That's going to give me this graph right here. So remember last time I was pretty self-critical because these weren't concave enough and these are not very good either. But you know you don't want to make them like W's and V's. You want to make sure that you're rounding them off the best you can. Now I only did half of this graph. We got to work our way left. Now remember it keeps the it keeps the same pattern. So there's a zero at two pi, three pi over two. These are all zeros. Just keep the zeros going. I'm going to add some zeros here. And then you can look at it and you can figure out the pattern. It was going from a maximum to zero. We should be at a minimum down here, back to zero, up at a maximum. And then we just continue the pattern. That was, what do we got here? Down here, here. Continue the pattern correctly. That part was important too. All right, let's draw this. That's actually not too bad for me. And if you notice, we have two full cycles here before 2 pi. And that's something I really want to talk about. This, this period here, when we figured it out, it's pi, right? So the period tells you how far you have to go before you complete one full cycle. I think we've emphasized that, right? Let's go pi units. We go up, down, and then we end at pi. And guess what? We completed our first unit. But this value of b, sometimes students ask me what that value means, 2. Well, the answer is it means we have two complete cycles by 2 pi. That's one time around the circle. So look, by the time we get to 2 pi, count the number of cycles. 1, 2. So that value of b will tell you how many cycles are contained within 2 pi. Or you can look at the period and decide, well, we'll just finish our first cycle by pi. You can graph these either way. I like it actually... I like it the other way. I like it by, by using B, but I know a lot of people like using the period too. So knowing them both will give you the best situation for each problem that you encounter. Let's look at number two. All right, for number two, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit. I mean, it's pretty close, but let's call it Y equals negative two times the cosine of, you guessed it, one half X. So that's what it means to divide by 2, right? So we're just going to use 1 half x because I think 1 half would be a little easier. Uh, if I have to figure out the period, for example, so the period is 2 pi over b, right? But that's going to equal, in this case, 2 pi over 1 half. we got to make sure we're careful with our fractions here. 2 pi divided by 1 half, that's all going to equal 4 pi. Now, how do you do And you can just multiply by 2 over 2, and that'll just cancel those things out and give you a 4 pi there. And that's what our period is going to be. Now remember we just talked about that period. We're going to come back to it. But it means that's how long it takes to complete a cycle. 2 pi. Look at my graph. Or 4 pi. The graph only goes to 2 pi. i got to go to 4 pi to complete a whole cycle. So that's going to change how this looks a little bit. The amplitude here is 2. We know that the maximum value will be 2 and the minimum value will be negative 2. The frequency is just 1 over the period, right? So it's just 1 over 4 pi. And the midline is that number that's at the end that we haven't dealt with yet. So we're just going to leave that at y equals 0. And let's get started by graphing this by starting with our midline. It's a good place to start. It's still on y equals 0. And I'm going to draw a little cosine curve over here just so I can remember what they look like. Cosine, you remember, look, kind of looks like this. You got, you got this, and then you got, okay, you got top, and then down, and then up, right? That's the cosine curve. All right, so I'm going to keep that in mind. With a negative amplitude, it means it's flipped, right? So it's going to start low, go high, and then come down low. And here's the part that's a little tricky, that period. So if it takes 4 pi units to finish the whole cycle, that means that by 2 pi cycles, I'm halfway through. That's the way I'm thinking about this. And the way cosine works is it starts at a max, and halfway through, you're at the min. But because we have a negative coefficient in front here everything's flipped so we're going to start at the minimum value which we know is negative two so let's just label this negative one negative two we're going to start here all right let me put a one and two on here 
Now remember, I've got to get through half a cosine cycle by 2 pi. Or it's going to take 4 pi, which is way out here on the side of the screen, to complete everything. Well, I can only do half a cycle. Half a cycle is starting at the top at the maximum and going to the minimum. But if I have a negative coefficient, it flips things. So it'll really look like this, right? Starting at a minimum and going up to a maximum. That's what we're going to do here. By 2 pi, I need to be at a maximum of 2. Then I can play the game of halvesies. Halfway between 0 and 2 pi is 1 pi, and that's where we cross the x-axis or our midline. And then we use the same pattern going back. Another pi units here. We're going to cross the 0, and then at negative 2 pi, I should be at my maximum again. Let's draw that curve nice and smooth. And we get this nice cosine curve that starts at negative 2, it ends at 2, crosses at pi, at negative pi. And that's basically it. Is the, is the period 4 pi? So if I go another 2 pi, I'm going to end up down here at the minimum, and that would be one complete cycle. So yes, the period is 4 pi. Midline is still y equals 0. Max and mins are right. I think we're good with this one. Let's go on to the next type here, where we actually have a value for d. The amplitude for number 3 um, what do we got for an amplitude? A 2, right? Okay. Which means, all right, well, we got to be careful. Time out. Pause. Midline. We're going to put that midline. But you know what that plus 1 does at the end? It moves that midline up to here. Okay. So this is actually going to be the center of our graph, which means our amplitude, we're going to start using that and adding it to D and subtracting it from D, and that will tell us our max and our min values. So if you take 1, which is at the center, and you add 2 to it, you're going to get a maximum value of 3. And if you take 1 and subtract 2, your minimum value is going to be negative 1. Okay. B here. Let's write B. B is equal to 1 half, right? Because you have a half here. That's like the other problem we did. So our period is going to be 2 pi over B. So we're going to write that over 1 half. And we just did a problem like this. This is all going to equal 4 pi. So this is another one that's kind of stretched out a little bit. The frequency would be 1 over 4 pi, right? We're not going to do much with that right now. But the midline, this is the new part. The midline is going to be y equals whatever that value is for d, which is y equals 1. Okay, I finished all my different values up here. And now it's just time to graph it. I like graphing a little side sign over here. Here's what sign looks like. We've memorized this, 0 up, down, and then starts back. It, it completes at 0, right? So I'm going to start here at, well, this is actually a value 1, right? Because we have d equal to 1. So normally we start at 0, but we've been, we slid up one unit. So we're going to start at 1. And normally we would go up, down, up, all by 2 pi. But now the period is 4 pi, and I only need half a curve. So that means I'm going to go up and down. That's half the curve, right? Look at this. Here's half the curve, right? There's the first half, right there. Okay, I'm going to go up and down all by 2 pi. And I need to know the amplitude is 2, which means from the midline, I can count up 2. 1, 2. Okay, or these values we calculated, what do we got? Pi value, and then go up 1, 2, 3. The minimum value would be negative 1, which would be down here somewhere, but we didn't go that far yet. So we're going to draw this half of the sine curve. I'm trying to draw it nice and curvy. That was terrible. And that is a little better, but we got to keep going the other direction, right? So we're going to hit a minimum. We're going to come back up and end on our midline here at uh, negative 2 pi. And our midline, we're going to go down 2 because that is our amplitude. It should be a value of negative 1, which it is. Okay, so we're going to keep trying to hope for our best. Mr. Kelly's going to... Oh, that's pretty good. That's the best. Ooh, let's label this one. Y equals 2 times the sine of X over 2 plus 1. And there's that one. Now, I'm kind of tempted to let you do the next one all by yourself. But before you do, I'm also tempted to give you a little clue. Let's rewrite this in a different order because this starts with the d value first, right? So if I wanted to rewrite this in equivalent form, I would write it like y equals negative 4 cosine 2x. Notice how that cosine term is, is actually being subtracted. So it's negative 4 cosine 2x plus 3. Your value for d equals 3, b is 2, a is negative 4. It's time for you to fly. 
All right, pause the video. Good luck. All right, we're back. Where'd we go? Check this out. Uh, what do we got? A period of pi. That's important, which means by pi, you have completed one cycle. The amplitude is four. Okay, it's negative. A is negative, so be mindful of that. Uh, we said the period is five. The midline is three because that's the value of D right there. And the max and the min, you can subtract from that three. Take that amplitude, subtract it, and add it, and you'll get seven and negative one. Now, yes, I know it goes off the graph. Don't be the kid that just quits because it goes off the graph. Finish the graph. My goodness gracious, it went off my graph too. Look at cosine. Cosine always, here's a very simple cosine curve, which I know we've all memorized. It's in our brain right now. But cosine starts high, goes low, and then ends high, right? I mean, that's the basic cosine curve. So because it's negative 4, the negative is going to flip it over. So it's going to start low, go high, and then come down. And because that period is pi, or because b is 2, look at that value of b. So that tells us we have two full complete cycles by 2 pi. So that's what I have right here. We go from here to 2 pi. That's two cycles. That means by pi is one cycle. That's the period. And in half of that, you should be at the opposite end. And then the zeros here. You can't really see it, but I put zeros on the midline as well, which is at y equals 3. Last stop, I would probably graph this thing. y equals, I'm sorry, label it. Y'all should label your stuff. y equals 4 times the cosine of 2x. And we're done. That's it. That's not too bad, is it? Good luck to you all out there. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See ya!